And then you saw Axis there ringing that opening bell. They have a, an Astoria-focused ETF. Uh, I have to get a little, and no, as no surprise, PPI is their ticker. Uh, that's not the producer price index, nonetheless, AXS ringing that opening bell on Wall Street. And what is a holiday short week? We need a Williamsburg-focused ETF at yes. this point. Yes, that's very true. Yeah. All right, uh, let's get into retail here. Uh, the fund does uh, indeed continues. Shares of American Eagle are in focus this morning after Morgan Stanley downgraded its rating on the apparel company from equal weight to underweight and lower its price target to $8. Uh, that's not a good look. That $8 price target here would, uh, is uh, suggesting 40% downside into American Eagle Outfitters. Uh, an equal weight, if you are curious in your home, what, what in the world does that even mean? Essentially, you're looking for the stock to uh, perform not too well versus the S&P 500 and other peers uh, in this network. But still, American Eagle out with earnings last week. You had the company warning that they had big challenges. Their inventory was up about 46% year over year. They checked all the boxes mm. for a terrible quarter <laughs> and likely a terrible start to the second quarter. Yeah, basically a heightened risk to the top line growth, um, risk to 2022 margins as well. Uh, they're saying that management has yet to lower its optimistic 2023 financial targets, which you mentioned were brought up in the most recent earnings uh, that suggested them to believe that negative earnings revision risk extends into next year. This is from the analyst Kimberly Greenberger. Uh, they're also looking for a 30 percent downside to the two hundred and eleven million dollars. Um, well, that's what they're kind of targeting for at this point in time for the operating income. Uh, so at the end of the day, street low price target that we're seeing on A and AEO. Uh, and this kind of mirrors what you were looking at with Gap as well. <laughs> You're just teaming me up here. <laughs> You're just teaming me up. I miss, I miss the Gap. Well, I didn't really miss it. I saw the earnings. Uh, we're over in Davos, Switzerland, covering the World Economic Forum. But I mean, Gap is dreadful. I mean, let's just remind folks the outlook this company provided. Uh, looking for 30 cent to 60 cents a share in earnings this year. The street was over $2. Uh, this is just, uh, Gap just continues to be a terribly run company. That stock is now it's now back above uh, $10, but was flirting below $10, uh, $10 a share, a fundamentally challenged company. You still have to think that Gap is in a worse place than American Eagle Outfitters. At least when I walk to American Eagle Outfitters, there are actual humans in there, and they're not giving the whole store away. That is completely the opposite over at Gap. Well, I mean, you just think about the type of fashion that people are gravitating towards right now. In the kind of reemergence of some of the social structures or in-person events that are taking place, are you really going back to, if it's not athleisure, at least with just kind of the focus on the fabrics at this point and not really all the flashy patterns or all the different designs. Are you really just going back to a basic T and some of the basics that Gap has become known for? And of course, all they, they have all the subsidiaries and Gap and Old Navy. Old Navy has really been doing the heavy lifting on that front for years at this point. And so with all of those partnerships in the world of even the partnership that they had with Kanye West or Ye, I should say, the Nays have it right now. And that's exactly what's being priced in with Gap shares, unfortunately, also ripple effect going into American Eagle Outfitters as well. I think I have a lot of people, Brad, you mentioned it. That's a good point there on product quality. You have a lot of people, if they're going to go out there and spend in an inflationary environment, they want to see high quality goods. And you go to Gap, I buy, I've bought t-shirts from Gap. I get them a medium, you wash them once, they come out all wrinkled, and now they're suddenly an extra small. So it's really bad. are showing at that it, point. It's really, right? It's really bad. And so I'm now gravitating to a brand like Roan, a higher, uh, an upper mm. Uh, a little more premium priced menswear brand that is out there. I believe they've raised uh, a couple rounds of capital, but yeah. still higher quality clothing that will survive more than, wash more than five washes in the machine.